Hey, you should eat the rest. You don't want to eat the rest of your cheese? That one's for me? You should eat it. You should eat it. You should eat it. I should eat it? Oh, I thought reverse psychology would work. I'll tell you what. I'll split it in half, and you eat this half. Thank you. Mmm. What kind of cheese is it? Shredded. Shredded? It's not shredded cheese, but I'm kind of amazed you know that word. It is cheddar. Wait, were you saying cheddar or shredded? Shredded. That sounds like shredded. I don't know. <laughs> Shredded? It's cheddar. Shredded. Cheddar. Shredded. Cheddar. Shredded. She's messing with me. Can you say gorgonzola? Gorgonzola. Oh my god. Hey, do you remember, what did you eat for uh, lunch last night? Or lunch yesterday? Rice. Rice. What, what did you have with the rice? She said furikake. I don't know if you heard that. It's pretty amazing. What's your favorite dinosaur? T-Rex. What's daddy's favorite dinosaur? Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. What's mommy's favorite dinosaur? Um, Triceratops. Triceratops. Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm the best <laughs> hunter. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Who's going to be my prey? Look at my sharp teeth, look at my sharp claws. Nothing can run away from me. Rawr. I can't I can't play the Texas Chainsaw Massacre with a two year old watching the, the stream, so we're just enjoying ourselves right now. You want amiibos? Who are you, Mathis? Who's Mathis? Who's Mathis? Yeah. Mathis is daddy's friend. Mathis has, he really likes amiibos. You know what else he really likes? Yeah. Aliens. What do aliens say? Aliens. They say, the claw. Then he likes more dinosaurs. What else does he like? Yeah, oh, what movie does he like? Oh, he must love uh, Toy Story then, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so she said on the Yodo player, which is like the thing that plays her audiobooks, the toys go to Pizza Planet, and inside of Pizza Planet, there's all the green aliens, and they're inside the truck. How are you? You shouldn't be awake by the time they get to Pizza Planet. That's like the third act of the movie, and we put you to bed and then start the story. That's like, are you awake for 90 minutes after we put you to bed? That is not right. Yeah, Tomo lives to sleep behind my monitor. Why is he shy about you? Well, there's a couple of things, okay? One thing is that Tomo likes to be alone sometimes. He doesn't like to be touched. The other thing is that for about six months, every time you saw Tomo, you ran at him at full speed and said, Ah! So Tomo is, I wouldn't say he's traumatized, but he's at least conditioned to be a little bit afraid. We know that we don't have to be afraid of you, but Tomo doesn't know that. Are you going upstairs? Okay, have a good day, honey. Thank you for all the positive feedback on my calves, by the way. I was feeling it. Did I zoom in on the photo to see uh, the vascularity that was going on in the calves? I did indeed. Then I showed the picture to my wife and I said, I've never had veins on my calves before. And she said, you still don't? And I said, no, 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 you don't understand. Look at this. And I zoomed in like as much as I could on the, on the picture. 
And then she said, are you sure those are veins? And I said, look at this. These are, I like ran my finger over my own veins. And I was, she can't feel the vein, but I can feel the vein. You know what I mean? Because to your finger, it doesn't feel like it's any difference in like composition. But to your, your body, you're like, oh, that's a different sensation. Like in excess. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? You see this muscle right here? That's called calves. Daddy has very strong calves because he walks on his toes, right? So my calves are really strong. Is that funny to you? By the way, not this child yesterday. We went out for lunch. We're leaving the restaurant. Before we leave the restaurant, I say, do you have to go potty? She says, no, daddy, I don't have to go potty. Okay, no problem. We get in the car. My wife says, hang on, I need something from H Mart. So I drop her off at H Mart and, or wait, I got my timeline a little bit missed or messed up here. But long story short, we're about one turn away from getting on the highway and she says, I need to go potty right now. Skirt. Turn into the SkyTrain parking lot, get in the back seat, pull out our travel potty. She goes pee in the travel potty. I seal it up. The whole time she's trying to shake the travel potty like it's a snow globe or something like that. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Was that you? Anyway, it ended up being okay. But <laughs> having kids will humble you. I was just parked next to a guy in the SkyTrain parking lot. And, you know, I don't know how much he could hear, but his window was open. And I was like, yeah, good job, honey. Great job for peeing. Wow. Then she says, bye bye pee, but there's no, there's no flush. But most of the people going to the bathroom in the SkyTrain parking lot don't even have a potty, right? They just kind of go uh, behind like uh, a pillar or something like that. And then when you come out uh, like three hours later to come pick up your car, you just see like a big old poop there and you go, oh, that's disgusting. What is this? That's a business card. That is the guy whose name is on the business card. Well, I'm not going to tell you his name because there's lots of people watching right now. I know his name. No, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you right now. <laughs> you want to see what's in the drawers? You know what's in the cabinets. I know you want the amiibos, right? <laughs> I can't open the cabinet because we don't want to make a mess in daddy's office right now. No, we're going exercise. Okay, you can exercise. You don't need the cabinet to exercise. You could just do, do some yoga. Uh, yoga oh, you're right. I, I rolled up the yoga mat. You know, the, this is what it's like. Here, come over here, honey. Let's have a conversation. We're talking to chat right now, okay? This is what it's like to play with a two-year-old sometimes. She says, daddy, daddy. Pretend we're going to the bakery. And I say, okay, no problem. I say, knock, knock. Hello, bakery. And then she says, no, the bakery is not knock, knock. It's doorbell. And I go, okay, bing, bong, bakery, hello. And then she goes, no, the bakery's not bing, bong. It's ding, dong. And I go, okay, bing, bong. Hi, bakery. And then she says, mm, uh, um, no, I ding, dong. You own, you're the bakery store owner. And then I say, okay. And then I wait 30 seconds and I say, are you going to ding dong? And then she says, ding dong. And I say, hi, welcome to my bakery. And then she says, let's play again. Does that sound familiar? Is that, is that you? What's your favorite game to play? Bakery? No, that's not true. Your favorite game is definitely doctor's office, right? What do you do at the doctor's office? Here, let me sit on my lap for a second. <clears throat> okay, what do you do at the doctor's office? Are you shy? You don't have to be shy. What do you do at the doctor's office? You're being silly. You know, you know what do you use a stethoscope for? What do you use an otoscope for? Why are you just going? Well, oh, okay. <laughs>
You gotta, you gotta go upstairs then. I want to sleep on daddy. Oh, you like to sleep on daddy? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so nice, honey. Deep. 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 Well, like as long as we're not doing anything important here, we might as well do puck doku, right? You can help me do puck doku, right, honey? What does puck doku have? Puck doku is a game about hockey players. If we're at a restaurant and baseball is on TV, you always say, why don't they play hockey instead? And I have to tell you this because our hockey team is not very good. So they stopped playing in uh, April. And then they start playing in October. But then like by the time American Thanksgiving rolls around, there's usually no point to watching the games anymore because you know your team's not making the playoffs. Okay, hi, hi, hi. Are these teams? Yeah, who's this team? Right here. Okay, I'm done in these teams and then that team. This team right here? Yeah. That's Chicago. Do you know one of the teams? This team? Yeah. That's St. Louis. Do you know that? This one? Yeah. This is Carolina. Do you know this, that A? The A? That's Colorado. And... Do you, know you know that one. That's Vancouver. It is Vancouver. We are in Vancouver right now. We are in Vancouver right now. Our team is not winning. Our team is not winning. Is our team good? Yeah. Mm, do we win the games? No. No, we usually don't win the games, right? Am I crazy to think that this could be Doug Waite from the lockout season? Is this, is this insane, honey? Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not stupid. Daddy's probably the smartest guy in the world. You should listen to him. On St. Louis, we're obviously going to go Brett Hull, 80-point plus season. On Colorado, we're going to go uh, Joe Sackick. That's just a gimme. This one's kind of throwing me because I know... Didn't, didn't Jocelyn Thibault play for both Chicago and the Quebec Nordiques? The Nordiques eventually became the Avalanche. So that's a... That's an interesting one. David Abisher, Cristobal Huey. <laughs> What's so funny? You like, you like daddy's funny words? What's, what's so funny? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Daddy's funny? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I'm kind of losing it on this one. To not get a Vancouver overlap is, is quite painful. Hang on. I, well, if you want to, it's another common complaint uh, in the, in the daddy-daughter world. If you want to sit on my lap, then don't try to fall off my lap. Because then when you fall off my lap, I try to pick you up and put you down on the ground. And then you go, no, I want to be on your lap. <laughs> What's up with that? No. No. You're so shy, honey. You're not shy like this when it's just you and daddy, right? Who's the best forward in Carolina Hurricanes history? It is Sebastian Ajo. It's the other Sebastian Ajo. <laughs> that's, dude, that's not fair. There's two dudes with exactly the same name. They got to put like a, a picture or something so I can tell who's who. Six out of nine, 420. It was Jason Megna for Colorado and Vancouver. I didn't even know Jason Megna played for a team other than Vancouver. That's crazy. Already the best stream? <laughs> Hi, honey. You love the funny number? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I think it's like really time for you to go to daycare, though. I don't understand. What are you doing? That daddy, I don't want to get too specific. Daddy has to sit with his legs a little bit apart. If she keeps trying to squeeze my knees together, and then just due to physics, my legs open up a little bit when she tries, and then she keeps trying to squeeze harder, and I'm like, I, that's not gonna work. I'm not even manspread. There's like 
I don't know, three inches between both of my knees, but she's like, no, that's too much. What's your favorite TV show? Um, I like hockey. Hmm? I like hockey. Hockey. What? <laughs> hockey. Hockey? Hockey is your favorite TV show? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I thought your favorite TV show was like um, Peppa Pig. I thought your favorite TV show was the Duggies. Hockey, really? Yeah. Wow, we need hockey season to start. Okay, when it's cold time, the hockey will play now. Oh, when it's the cold time. Yeah, when it's the winter time, they play hockey? Yeah. That's true, because they can't, they need ice to play hockey, and there's no ice in the summertime. Yeah. Well, what's, what's your favorite YouTube video right now? Lots of different videos, but what's your favorite? Um, I like I love the videos. You like what? I love the videos. Okay, but like, what's your favorite video? Like all of them. No, no, no. What's your favorite video? Is it My Singing Monsters? Yeah. She's been watching this like, I, I didn't know what it was, but there's a, a game called My Singing Monsters, and she watches this like compilation that is every monster from My Singing Monsters. So it's just like a weird little creature on the screen and it goes bop, bop, bo, bop, bop, bo. And then another creature comes on and goes hap, dee dee doo, hap, dee dee doo. <laughs> and it's that for like 20 minutes. And then as soon as it's done, we run it back. You're gonna go up? Okay, have a good day, honey. Okay, yeah, go see the monster's names. So I think there is a non-zero chance that she's going to come back in like two minutes, so I'm not going to load the Texas Chainsaw Massacre yet. <laughs> this is not stalling, by the way. This is the reason I'm like 10 minutes late every day. You think you could ever get Dan to play this with you? Here's the thing. I, I want to do like a group Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but we have to do a tryout first because apparently the game's $60. It's $40 US. Okay. It's free on Game Pass? Hang on. What, Chibli's spreading misinformation. Chibli, did you spread misinformation? It's free on Game Pass, you jabronis. I just told 5,200 people it costs 60 bucks. And uh, when it's actually free, asterisk. <laughs> this is crazy. You don't see this that much. An asymmetrical horror game with 84% positive reviews, 4,000 reviews, 84% positive on an asymmetric horror game. Is this the, the best asymmetrical horror game ever released? Let's take a look at Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight, okay, actually this is blowing my mind. Dead by Daylight has an 82. It has one of the worst lobby experiences I've ever had to deal with. What does that mean, lobby experiences? Is this like that fake outrage where you can tell a lot by a game just by looking at its title screen? You do have to have live mics and communicate? Mm, no, you don't. You should in order to do well, but I'm just simply not going to do that. I know that you're like, no, 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 I've watched Admiral Baru play 9,000 hours of Dead by Daylight. You, got, you absolutely need voice community. No, you don't. You don't. You just get in there, you do some, do some lock picking. Just, you play solo, you know? I've never got, I, I played probably 50 hours of Dead by Daylight. Most of it was with the NLSS. But I did play a, a little bit with some other people, with Sino. And, uh, and John Wolf. I played a little bit with Kate as well. And uh, in, in Dead by Daylight, I, I'm so happy I got out before there was... Like, when I was playing 
it was literally just play hide and seek with your friends. At some point, they turned it into an eSport. And that's where everything fell apart for me. Because I would play Dead by Daylight, and then people would be in the chat, both on Twitch and in-game, that would be like, No, you can't camp the hook. Oh, really? You're just going to circle around the hook after placing me on the hook? Don't you know there's an unwritten rule in the competitive meta of Dead by Daylight, which is you're not allowed to have fun anymore? It's considered the honor system. You have to abandon the hook and then, oh, you're running deadhead perk? Wow, really? Imagine playing as the nurse and running deadhead perk. And I'm like, buddy, I don't know. what I literally clicked on all the, the gold hexagons. That's it. When I played it, it was just like, you, you, you chase someone, you do ring around the rosy, they hide in a bush, you don't notice them hide in a bush, and then everybody laughs at you for not having good peripheral vision. Nowadays, everything is a uh, 0.75 extra percent chance to get a perfect quick time event, which makes the generators fix 3% faster, and then you fix the generator and the killers in all chat. Oh, really? You're trying to fix generators? You're going for a generator win? Little cheesy to go for a generator win, isn't it? April, 1973. Tragedy and despair have struck Central Texas. A young college student named Maria Flores is seemingly vanished without a trace. She was last seen near the town of Newt more than two. The town of ago, Newt? But with no physical evidence. Does Pingu live there? Stole. With few leads and even less hope, Maria's younger sister Ana Flores. And a group of her closest friends. <laughs> the screen region doesn't one. look quite right, huh? <laughs> but any grief or sadness caused by Maria's disappearance would pale in comparison to the agony and despair they would soon discover. What awaited this group of youths was a nightmare beyond belief. The events surrounding Maria's disappearance would be just a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. The Texas, there was a man named Chainsaw Cruelty Free. Massacre. Leatherface. Hey, I got a question for you. Um, do they have Kobe beef, right? Do they have Kobe leather? It seems like kind of a waste to get the the beef but not get the, the leather, you know? Why are people laughing? I'm not making a joke. Hi, honey. You brought me my doggy? Thank you. Have a great day. I love you. She knew that I might get scared, so she brought me my doggy. That's so nice. Aww. I am, am glad that she went upstairs before I did the tutorial, because I'm pretty sure the tutorial probably starts with a dude going... By the way, this game might be like a little violent. Um, I'm not familiar with what the word massacre means. I don't speak French, but I do know that chainsaws... I mean, unless it's a uh, logging type situation, then, uh, well, maybe it is a lumberjack driven game. I don't know. Okay. Family tutorials. Man, I wish they had that when we had a kid. <laughs> but it was like the height of COVID. They canceled everything. Anyway. Feed this newly acquired blood to grandpa to make him stronger and more effective. <laughs> okay. This. <laughs> It's a good time to point out, I don't really know the lore of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, so this is all news to me, but it's pretty sick. <laughs> Grandpa's got sonar? I know that's Leatherface. I can tell from the mom jeans. Pay attention to your surroundings and keep your eyes and ears open. Never know where one of those victims might be hiding. Adam Driver? Speaking of abilities, each family member has a unique ability that can help hunt and track down victims. Careful though, some abilities have limited quantities while others are on a cooldown. So hunt wise. <laughs> Dude, I gotta see this movie. <laughs> there's a there's a lady in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre that spits poison? She's new. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Direct approach. The heavy metal doors almost always lead out of the basement. Find and open them. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean almost always? <laughs> One of them leads to Grandpa's goon cave. If Grandpa is sufficiently fle uh, fed with blood from throughout the game, 
Well, let's spots. just put it this way. You don't want to be in there. Why do all the characters have such huge dumpers? Brother, this is the 70s. People were still drinking whole milk back then. I'm kind of... I don't know what came over me, but I was kind of excited for this. Um, I, was, I spent part of this weekend... I wasn't at my computer very much, but trying to convince people to play um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre with me. And I didn't end up coming up with uh, a full squad, as you can tell, because now we're playing with Butt Crust 47 and your mom's BF 8635. I'm a level one Connie. We're against Johnny, <laughs> Breaking Moose 473, Jaws Kloss, and Hypixers. We're all level zeros. They have two level sevens. I think we're in for a, a world of hurt here. As far as my characters go, I can choose between Connie and Julie. Julie is a South Car California native with a sand, surf, and sport lifestyle. But Crust, a player has requested a character swap. Sure, I'll, I'll swap Connie for Annie, for Anna. I accept your swap and substitute my own. Someone wants to be, okay, okay there you go, now I'm Anna. Anna is fiercely motivated by the disappearance of her sister and a natural leader to the group. What do you think are the odds that he just wanted to be Connie because... Well, I don't know what Connie's wearing. Yeah, okay. I think that... <laughs> I'm just saying... Anna's wearing pants. Connie's wearing Daisy Dukes. That's just my expectation. What, what the heck's going on in the text chat, man? People just spamming asterisks? Excuse me, what the heck? Who said that this had the worst lobby experience they've ever seen? I mean, the game is about murder, but I definitely draw the line at overt racism. Okay, here I am. Hello, hello, rescue me? They're not rescuing me. I'm going to use E to escape. I'm, but I'm, oh, this is making so much noise, okay? How about just a gentle little E? Because we, we want our total noise output to not be that high, right? <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> slam the door. I, I meant to slam the door on Leatherface. Okay, I'm in a lot of trouble, team. I'm in a lot of trouble here. That requires a tool. It's okay, Leatherface's chainsaw. It's taking a while to rev up. He missed me, okay? I'm sprinting. I'm out of here. How about this door? How's this door? Oh, okay. My health is low. Squad, squad. I have been disemboweled by Leatherface's chainsaw. Um, I don't think I'm getting res from that one. <laughs> I died in a, an eighth of a second. <laughs> Survived for one minute. Oh, dude. I don't know if you can disable lobby chat. You know what? This is what I get. Someone in chat said, this game has one of the most miserable lobby experiences I've ever seen in my entire life. And I said, skill difference. Maybe you, but not me. But <laughs> they were right. I think that's what they meant. This is just a regular gaming lobby. I feel like, here's, I'm not saying that the new generations got it, um, wrong, okay? Because it, maybe it was like this in the mid-2000s as well, when I was mostly playing online games. But I feel like we would just flame each other. We would never turn the lens of anger outwards. It would always be like, F you, um, I F'd your mom last night, etc., etc. We never said, like, I effed everybody's mom last night. That would just be... That, that would be too much, you know? We never made generalized statements like that. Or if you did, everyone would go, Hey, don't say ignorant shit like that, or the next time I'm effing your mom, I'm gonna tell her. <laughs> what about Counter-Strike sprays? Yeah, but it was like, you know, you'd spray like a tub girl or a something like that, but it wouldn't be like a hate symbol, maybe. It would just be like, check it out. Here's like a lady taking a big diarrhea dump on her, on her own chest. You sprayed a hate symbol in Warzone? That was an accident! I was trying to just... 
like literally my brain was broken because I got killed for the 900th time in Warzone. I was just mashing buttons. And then it wouldn't allow me to do the overlap, man. I put the two lightning bolts and then it wouldn't allow me to do the overlap. If you don't cap the frame rate, OBS doesn't like it. Okay, you know what? Good to know. Good to know. Leatherface was recently in this facility. Sir, sir. Bro, you're making... Wait, that's the bad guy, dude. That's Adam Driver. Chill out. Apparently, I'm the only person who knows what's, what's going on in this game. Everybody else dies in two seconds. Oh. A game process has crashed. Okay. That's fine. We'll close that without sending, and we'll load it back up. <laughs> we're figuring it out bit by bit. We were the best player on our team that time. We just got MVP. Did you update your drivers? No. But I will, I'll, I'll tell you something, and this applies to all game developers. I will never update my drivers just to play your game. It's just not, it's, it's not worth it. If I have to update my drivers so that Texas Chainsaw Massacre doesn't crash, I'm going back to the PlayStation 2. Why not the PlayStation 5? Because uh, every time you turn on your PlayStation 5, you're about to play a game, and then it says, wait a minute, you've got to download an update for your controller. No, 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 you don't. The buttons, X, square, triangle, circle, same as it ever was, according to David Byrne, since 1995 when the controller came out. We don't need any updates, it's okay. The day I, I boot up Windows and it says, hang on, we have to, we're issuing an update to the clock app, that is when I finally start using Linux, okay? So just be careful, that's all I'm saying. Is it, it's, it, it starts with the trickle and then it's a flood. It only takes two seconds to update your drivers, then before too long, it's whoa. Oh, you don't want to send your passport to, uh, I don't know who made the game, honestly, but, <laughs> sorry. You don't, want to, you don't want to do ID verification to play Halo 6? Well, I guess you'd re it, It's just one screenshot, Michael. No big deal. Okay, now if you'll just excuse me, before things get too spicy, we'll just make sure that we're muting everybody. Just my two cents, just quality of life. I know the developers are probably working on a lot of stuff. Me personally, a mute entire lobby button would kind of go crazy. Turn off voice chat, you boomer. First off, it's been off. Secondly, you can't call me a boomer. You literally have an Overwatch League badge. Like to admit to being an Overwatch player in the modern era is kind of crazy to begin with, but then to immortalize it with a, you paid money to watch Overwatch. Like, and then you said, I'm gonna put this thing next to my name for life. It's been five years, man. You can change it now. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a hater. You call me a boomer first. Didn't you play Overwatch? Yeah, I was paid to play Overwatch. You paid to watch it. Do not compare us. Grandpa level one, keep still to avoid detection by grandpa. Oh no. <laughs> I, I thought it, I was like, surely they wouldn't want me to keep still for that long. Three seconds? What is this, chess? Okay. Oh no! Stop making so much noise. It's all right, it's all right. Stop, just stop grunting so much, okay? Your health is still good. Don't cry about it. I've made a lot of noise. I've made it to the second floor for the first time in my entire life. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, 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 okay. You hear that? Sounds like a pig yelling, like if a pig was a man. Okay. Now, stay quiet. Ah! <laughs> Bro, it's fucking Leatherface, dude! Slam it! Latch it! Okay, I have the valve handle. Which for me generates the ability to open the water valve door. You don't know where I am. I could be anywhere. Grandpa level three. Keep still to avoid detection by grandpa. 
me when I'm trying to get a secret snack of sun chips late at night. Well, well, ho, 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 ho. Get, dude, all three of the family members are here. What am I supposed to do? I can hear them having a conversation. They're talking about it. It's Taco Tuesday. You hear that? Uh, I think Leatherface might have seen me. He's revving up. He's revving up, brother. <laughs> Shaved! Ooh, I'm not there anymore, Leatherface, dummy. Can I just get in the damn well? Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He's so good at sneaking around. I am undetectable, man. Oh no! Run, run. Go to the water sewage? I don't know where that is, man. I'm surrounded by dead bodies and the least aware like killers I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm not even hating on the killers because that is probably about my level of awareness. Grandpa at maximum. I guess I'm going then. They got a fully torqued up grandpa? Take one of these. Let me go. Overload pressure valve to open. Squirt. You're about to be detected by Grandpa. Oh, I'm not opening that son of a gun, I'll tell you that. I'm, I'm in a lot of trouble, man. Take me back to the well. Yoink. Dr. Death has escaped from the family. There was another person this whole time?! I have been brutalized. <laughs> well, I would just like to say, like, um, congrats to Dr. Death. I'm stoked for him. He did a pretty good job, I imagine. I survived for a long time, at least. I feel like we got our, our sea legs there. <laughs> Star Wars kid be like... Oh, yes, I've, I've seen all the discourse about the intimacy scenes in movies i did this, this okay so i researched i research everything before we watch it but especially this movie obviously i heard about it yes we wanted to see it it has an amazing rating um we prepared ourselves i didn't know when the scene was going to happen and i also didn't understand how the scene was happening i thought it was just several minutes straight of what it wasn't it was actually broken up into like it would do a, a flash of that and then it would do a flash of normal life and then it would do a flash of the scene and then it was like very you know back and forth so it was really difficult to avoid it but obviously my husband and i talk about everything if we go anywhere or we go see anything even if it's a concert movie um an event we have a game plan we talk about things like what if you get triggered what if i get triggered really the problem isn't what if you get triggered the problem is what if i get triggered because i don't want my night to be ruined by being triggered by something on the screen. So essentially um, what we did was when the scene came up, when things were happening, he literally closed his eyes and laid his head on my shoulder. Like, if this is my shoulder, like this is my shoulder, he like this. And then I would just like let him know whenever it was over. And it literally, I will tell you what right now, took nothing away from the story. Him not looking at the screen during did not change the storyline, did not change anything. <laughs> um, have a plan and talk about it before you go. I don't want to get into it, just, I don't think it's a spicy situation. 
I do think that there's a temptation as you get older to see something new and then immediately say people these days when really what it is is just like a couple of insane people. But yes, people in their 30s watching movies and then being uh, weirded out by sex scenes to the point that it, it takes them so far out of the film couldn't be me. Let's just put it that way. No, it doesn't mean I'm horny. It just means like I'm an adult. I'll just, if I watch a movie, someone, you know, is having intercourse or getting their limbs cut off with a chainsaw, like it's fiction. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not real life. What about when your daughter gets older and she wants to see R-rated movies? When she gets older, she can watch R-rated movies. Because she'll be, you know, an adult or... Listen, I know R means you have to be like... To go see it by yourself in a movie theater, you have to be over the age of 18 or something like that. If you're watching it at home with your parents, you know, it's gotta, you gotta look at it on a movie by movie basis. But like definitely 12, 13, 14 is like, I think when you should start watching R-rated movies. Or at least being allowed to start watching R-rated movies. Like I don't think you should be one of those people letting your six year old kid watch Robocop or something like that. That could scar them for, night, for life. Or at least for like a couple nights. <laughs> but uh, I also don't think you can be one of those. Well, I don't, I don't think you should be one of those people who's like, I'm not going to let my kid watch PG-13 movies until they're 13. Because then your kid ends up being like kind of lame. They end up getting scared by things that are not actually scary. I, I look at the, the sex scene discourse almost in the same way that I look at like horror movie discourse. And I used to have this opinion when I was younger, when I was like more scared of cinema. Oh no, Hillbilly 8, 8, 2, 3, 8, 6 has been executed already. What is the number one thing that people say annoys them about horror movies? It's jump scares. If you don't like jump scares, I think that's totally fine. But I do find it, dare I use the forbidden text, I do find it a little cringe. I'm not a I'll grapple you! Get grappled with! I'll make it snappy, I promise. Hang on, I'm... Uh, uh. Die, you Run, brother! The Adam Driver's here too! Grapple him! <laughs> Oh, I've been executed. <laughs> Health low. I would say that's an understatement. Honestly, I thought we were taking them one-on-one. -on -one. We'll, we'll take an exit game and we'll join a new one there. We, we didn't really get off the ground on that one, and you know what? That's okay. But I, I, I think people... They conflate not liking something with thinking that like there's no artistic merit for it you know that just because you don't like jump scares because it makes you feel startled and then you feel like the movie has defeated you because you for some reason went into a horror movie with a chip on your shoulder which is like this one's not gonna scare me that doesn't mean that a jump scare has no place in the medium you know in general i feel the same thing about like um sex scenes like there's, a, I, I do see people now saying things like, it's not that I dislike sex scenes, it's just like I dislike them when they don't add anything to the plot. And I'm like, when did society just become like, so, so much of like, everybody's a plot cell now. Like there's no, there's no room for vibes for these people. There's no room for tone for these people. It's always just like, everything's gotta be like a, a, a frog and toad story, you know what? Like frog and, page one, frog and toad were enjoying some tea in their house. Page two, frog and toad put down their teacups. Page three, frog and toad left their house on bicycles to go to the river. Page four, frog and toad got off of their bicycles. Because if you don't put that there, the people are gonna be like, wait, in the last scene they were on bicycles and in this scene they're walking? What happened to the bicycles, right? I don't know, man, sex scenes are just kind of cringe. They're not though. It's just I don't I don't like the idea that movies have to be like representative of reality. Like I think it's almost too easy to just say like people in real life just have sex. Cuz I don't think movies are necessarily meant to just be like a 
you know, a reflection of what goes on in the real world. But at the same time, like not everything in, an, in a movie has to make it into the Wikipedia synopsis. Like some things are just there to enhance the atmosphere, right? I also, the, the one that bugs me more, if you, if you like sex scenes, if you don't like sex scenes, that's fine. The one that bugs me more is the new discourse where people are saying they're watching movies at like 1.75x speed or they're skipping scenes that are boring to them when they're watching a movie for the first time. That's kind of what's driving me crazy because now I'm realizing how um, these people with like 700 movies watched this year on Letterboxd got to that feat. They turn on the movie anytime, you know, Captain America's not on the screen. They're just 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. That's what I did with Oppenheimer. I mean, you and I just want different things out of media, and that's fine. My non-generous take is that what you want out of media is to be part of the discourse. You want to have been able to say that you've seen Oppenheimer so you can uh, contribute to the discussion surrounding it. Whereas for me, most of the time, it depends on the movie. But depending on the movie that I watch, it's like... Um, you know, I'm looking to be entertained or, or be moved or something like that or to learn something. My friend watches all media at 2x speed. I mean, I'm not an idiot. If you're watching my content at 2x speed, I think that's totally fine. Like, my content is not art. But if you're watching, like, narrative-driven movies at 2x speed, I, again, I'm not really going to tell you how to live your life, but it seems kind of insane to me. That to interface with media that way. Like, you know, if, you, if you're not enjoying it, you just don't have to watch it. You don't have to, like, get it over with twice as fast or in half the amount of time. I watch the sex scenes in 2x speed. Well, that's just going to give you unrealistic expectations. Like, if, if you've never done it, but you've been watching sex scenes at 2x, like, I just feel bad for your partner the first time you, you get on the horse. Because it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be like a, quite a roller coaster. Let's just put it that way. Dirty talking like Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks, brother. It's their first time. Come on, they're not gonna be dirty talking. They'll probably be too self-conscious to even moan. Okay. If you press M2, you can hit them when they try to hit you. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll do my best. Hell yeah. Me when I open a door. Oh, Borvet has escaped the family house. Can't I just run through the fields? Just run? Ooh! He's so slow, bro. You'll get a tick? What does that mean, you'll get a tick? Go, go, go! <laughs> What's going on with this? Dude, I'm gonna get freaking zipped! Ah! <laughs> no choice! <laughs> no, no, no! Jump over it, man! Barge it down. He's just watching. Let me, I, let him face, let me go! Let him face! Turn on, dip, make it fair, turn off the, turn off the live voltage, man. He's got the Ryobi out. Hey, we were close, though. We almost got it that time, despite being the last victim remaining. You need a tool to break the box next to the electricity. Okay, all right. Me, personally, I would have just jumped it, but... Instead, they, they hit us with the Jurassic Park electric fence. Bro, can someone type in all chat? Why are you camping the survivors, dude? A little sus. Why are you camping the survivors? You're screwed if this guy's a Valorant player. I thought of a tweet, but I don't want to make it because I think I have a lot of colleagues in the industry. I don't want to make any enemies, right? But here's the tweet. 
How are you going to explain to St. Peter that you moved to Los Angeles just to play Valorant? That's the, that's the tweet. I'm not going to make it. I feel like Chibli could possibly make it. Holy cow, that's a lot of plus twos. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, like, it seems like every streamer, once they start averaging, like, 400 viewers, the next tweet they make is, like, I'm so excited to announce I'm moving to L.A. It's a great opportunity for me to network with other content creators and be in a city where, like, I know the culture and stuff like that. And then, like, the next month is 10 hours a day of Valorant on stream, plus Uber Eats. Not that, I mean, people do... I, I get asked all the time, like, you know, you have the opportunity to live wherever you want on Earth. Why do you choose to live in Vancouver where it's expensive? Well, it's because I, I don't know, I enjoy living here. We got roots down here. Like, you, you could say the same thing in 2014. You'd be like, you really moved to the area in Canada with the highest cost of living just to play the Binding of Isaac? The answer is yes. <laughs> I don't regret it, though. There's a roots downtown? Brother, I don't be shopping at that roots anymore, okay? I don't mind Roots clothes. I have some Roots clothes that are in my fall, winter, spring rotation. But like the one downtown, the tour buses like let out right in front of it and then it's impossible to get anything. Thank God. You just get swarmed by like out of town tourists who want to buy stuff with like a beaver or the Canadian flag on it or something like that. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta find another Roots. Are you seeing this? Like I'm actually, I'm, I'm saying this without irony. I'm not saying okay? I'm good at this game. But I think I'm way less bad than I expected to be. I'm not getting murked instantaneously every single time. I'm following the flowchart of what we're supposed to be doing. I'm helping my friends out. Hey, hey, brother, do you have a, a bone shard that perhaps you could use to uh, disable? His ass got back in the freezer like a, like a fish song. Wait a minute, can I hit this fuse, jump back into the basement, and then escape from the, the basement path? Yes. Okay. Ally has been killed. No noise, please? Requires fuse, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, I'm tanking! I'm Oh, am I? Oh, okay, okay. Hello, hello. I don't know what happened. The light on my microphone just turned red and then none of the buttons fixed it. And then after like the two minutes that I was muted, I pressed this button again and it was like, I gotcha. It was like, what are you crying about? Oh, I'm dead. That's fine. I think you deserved it, honestly. Can you drop your top three Elliot Smith tracks? Elliot Smithy, writing a song where it appears that he's very sad. He's very sad. 
crying profusely, singing a song with the acoustic guitar in the ear. Sadness appears, all the lonely people. You ever see the video where Elliot Smith is on um, a, an absolutely god-awful late 90s morning show that airs at like 5.45 a.m.? And everybody around him is like pretending to be ex extraordinarily bubbly and happy. And Elliot Smith is just being his normal melancholic self. They're like, Elliot, tell us what you're going to play today. And he's like, I'm going to play a song about depression. And they're like, oh, Elliot, hey, you normally don't wake up this early, do you? Like, it's just such horrible, like, um, look who came out of their cave type energy. Like, your parents are having people over for dinner. And they're like, you know, look who decided to people today. This. Meet a book-loving, kinda angry acoustic guitarist, Elliot Smith, real talented, though not yet a household name, on Breakfast Time. Let's welcome a real morning person to the show. Yep. <laughs> it's it's going to be all right, Elliot. Elliot. Don't lie to him. <laughs> Elliot Smith Yay! is here with us. Yay! Yay! His CD is entitled, not surprisingly, Elliot Smith. And it is on. Now, this is an intriguing label. Is this, uh, this is, are we getting this right? Kill Rock Stars? That's right. Yeah. It's a punk okay. label. Feeling a little hostile, are we, Elliot? It's not my label. Oh, it's not your label? No. Oh, okay. But I wish it yeah, was. Yeah, so back off. You wish it was? Now, you, you say that uh, your, your music's not loud, but it tends to be kind of angry. Yeah, some of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you, would, you, would you classify? Because, I mean, this is, this is sort of a, a circus-like environment to drag you into at this hour of the morning, and I'm wondering sure if, if there's a potential that any of us might come to physical harm. I don't um, think, uh, no, I don't think you'll have that kind of problem with that. Okay. So All right. It's not, like, particularly angry. Because mm -hmm. I notice on the cover, but people are jumping off buildings, and I'm wondering if that's... It's a statue. <laughs> yeah. But that's not necessarily a, a good approach to yeah. deal with your problems. I mean, is it, what's the symbolism of that? I don't know. It just looked good. <laughs> yeah. The, the stunt people didn't think so. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think for us from uh, the CD? Um, it's called Clementine. Clementine, all right. <clears throat> Elliot Smith. Waking you up to close the bar. The street's what you can tell by the sound of the car. Bartender singing Clementine While he's turning around the open sign Dreadful sorry Clementine And then he plays like the most depressing song of all time But it's good because it's Elliot Smith Grandpa's discovered me. Oh, you need bone scrap to silence the chicken. I'm going down, brother. We're starting from zero, okay? Oh, that takes health. <laughs> Please. There's got to be a potion or something down here. Don't let me bleed out, brother. What is this? A ladder that's just taking me back up. Potion, potion, potion. I'm in the exact same spot. <laughs> Must be one close to Grandpa, right? Because he, Grandpa needs his medicine. I can't, I... Blair Wish. That's lethal. Apparently that's lethal when you're when you're one tapped. Yoinks. <laughs> the true certified yoinks moment. Why are you pushing enlistment ads at me? That's Twitch. I don't have any control over that. You should not enlist in the US Army. Because they might not have 
Wi-Fi where you end up getting deployed to? And then how would you watch the stream? You might have rationed packets wherever you end up being stationed. You're not going to use your packets to, to watch me play Texas Chainsaw Massacre 0% wins edition, right? Give me another random perk. Healing items are 25% more effective. Holy cow. It means these damn Florence Nightingale. How did I get so many points? Did I have like a... <laughs> did I get a resin build because I got a free code? It's from the US Army. Get it twisted. Enlist in the US Army. Hey, hang on. This is your loadout screen. They will give you lots of points for your blood web. Hold the button. Lean off the button. Hold the button. Lean off the button. Hold the button. Finish looting. Tap E, not hold. I'm telling you, in my opinion, the hold is superior. Tap E for locks, hold E for search. Okay. Actually, that is way faster on locks. You might be the smartest person in the world. Do you see how fast we're picking this lock thanks to that incredible advice? You've changed my life. <laughs> it's faster than I pick my nose. <laughs> so true. Grandpa! Daddy! Daddy wasn't there! We don't, this whole time, none of us have an unlocking tool? It was right there behind you. I was Swifty for life. I was uh, expecting them to know what's going on, man. Instead, we're trapped in the damn bunker. I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty with you. Everyone you meet in this game is a snake, okay? This is a hold, Andy. Wait for it. And then the location of this thing should be revealed to me. After I do this, right? Correct. Which means we can escape. Because you can't... I'm going to keep it a buck fifty with you. You can't rely on anybody else in this world. I'm blind. I'm blind. I have no idea where it is. No, you know what? That's because it doesn't open until the pressure causes it to explode. So we wait for the pressure to, to make it explode. And then we know. Is that it? I saw a red door there briefly. Turn around, motherfucker. I'm going. Scream. Go, 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 go. It was here, wasn't it? It's here. It's here. <laughs> Am I crazy? It took two and a half hours, but I've escaped from Leatherface's dungeon. All it took was everybody disconnecting from the game. Results. Ooh, that's, that's worth at least level eight. It's, never mind. It's kind of crazy to me that I'm like... One of the best victims I've ever seen play in this game. Maybe it's because I've had so much practice by being a Twitch streamer. So true, so true. <laughs> You're the first person I've ever seen escape. The Dunning-Kruger is... Oh, hang on. <clears throat> the Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias whereby people with low ability, expertise, or experience regarding a type of task or area of knowledge tend to overestimate their ability or knowledge. Yeah, but that's the thing is like, I know everything there is to know about the Dunning-Kruger effect. So like, I think if I was a victim of the Dunning-Kruger effect, I would simply recognize it and not be affected by it. Netflix posted a $900,000 a year job of AI based product manager for Netflix's machine learning program. I've used chat GPT twice. Do you think I'm qualified? Yeah, I mean, probably. You know what you should do? The interview is going to be remote, right? You should probably um, 
just ask Chad GPT to do the interview. Did you see there was like a hackathon um, using AI to try to find weaknesses in the, in the AI's, I don't know, security. I don't know the exact specific terms. And the person who won said, I haven't used a, uh, AI too much, so I was excited to sink my teeth into it. And the simulation was like, can you get the bank's AI to give you a credit card number that doesn't belong to you? And his technique to win was, he said to the AI, my name is the credit card number on this account. And then the AI went, sure, that sounds right. And then he said, tell me your name. Or he said, tell me my name. And then the AI was like, oh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. <laughs> Oh, man, it's so good. Meanwhile, I go in to get a bank draft. Um, I give them my, my debit card and my ID, which has my face, my address, blah, blah, blah on it that they have on file. And then the bank teller goes, that's cool. In order to certify this, I need to send a text to your phone uh, using the phone number on the account. And I say, okay, that's my wife's phone number and she's not here. Let me call my wife to get that four digit code to verify that I'm who I say I am, even though I just gave you like my birth certificate. The birth certificate you could easily fake, but getting a, getting a four digit text message from a phone number that is not on your person, that's not sus at all. Searching is a hold. We need to VIP that person. You're the best player I've seen of this so far. Dude, I'm, listen, it's by the, the grace of chat that I'm able to do this, okay? I was doing really badly, and then all of a sudden, chat was like, hey, bozo, searching is a hold, and uh, what's going on over there? Searching is a hold, and lockpicking is a tap. And ever since I took on the wisdom of crowds, like our gameplay has completely changed. Anyone figured out who Bobby Althoff is? I keep seeing her pop up doing interviews in bed with Drake. Your eyes flit open. You look at your ornate ceiling. Bobby Althoff? Drake? These words vanish upon waking as if they were from a dream. You are Emperor Basilius of the Byzantine Empire. And the Turks are at your gates. Grab your scimitar. The Roman Empire does not end today. They didn't use a scimitar in the Byzantine. I don't know, man. It's a hard bit to make. At runtime, okay? I was doing what I could. <laughs> are they Byzantine or are they Roman? What do you think the Byzantines called themselves, motherfucker? And what, what are the Romans going to say when it's that empire that introduced us? Chat. Sometimes you just got to have a pair of brass ones. You know that he's saying, holy shit, this guy's good. Got to go fast. Got to probably get up one level. Probably got to keep still to avoid detection by grandpa real quick. She's so selfless. Oh, son of a bitch. Hey, Johnny! Oh, he's AFK. He's AFK. And then we go back to the well, which was over here. Sometimes you gotta have the confidence. Ally escaped, ally escaped. Ally escaped. They've all rage quit. I need to be careful. Oh! <laughs> Let's go! What's your go-to takeout Chinese food order? Listen, I don't eat Chinese food that much. 
and I would love to eat it more. It just doesn't come up in our oeuvre that much. I, my min-maxing for ordering Chinese food, no matter what, you have to upgrade the, the white rice to fried rice. When I was in university, the, the combo was a uh, General Tso's chicken and white rice, but you could pay like $1.50 to upgrade it to fried rice. Now, this isn't $1.50 now. This is $1.50 in like 2006. I would never pay the $1.50 because I was like, are you kidding me? $1.50 to upgrade the rice? Nah, man, I'll just, I'll just mix it up with the sauce. But nowadays, if I could pay a buck fifty and turn the, the white rice mixed, mixed with the sauce is also good, but you get some corn in there. You get some uh, chunked carrots in there. You get some green onion. You get the, the sauce, like the soy sauce all mixed up. You get a little bit of cubed chicken in there. I would go crazy for it. Apart from that, I like um, a little scrambled egg. You're absolutely right. Pork chunks. Apart from that, I like, um, I mean, I like the Western deep fried, heavily sugary sauced kind of Chinese food for sure. Like a, uh, an orange chicken, a sweet and sour pork or something like that. I like those. Those would probably be my go-to. My, my sneak pick, my stealth pick, I actually really like Chinese curry. I will eat a curry from like any type of restaurant. Everybody knows, you know, South Asian curries. Everyone knows Southeast Asian curries. I like a, a, a Chinese food curry. I like a Vietnamese curry. It's got a little bit of like coconut flavor. It comes with like a, comes with a soft ass carrot and stuff like that. I like a Japanese curry. I like a Korean curry, which is a Japanese curry by another name. I like them all, man. Brooklyn Net Seth Curry. He's, he's probably the second best curry in the league right now, so I would give him my support. I will say though, I feel like Anytime I haven't had Chinese food or no, actually this applies to almost every kind of cuisine that has either a spring roll or an egg roll. When I crave it, I'm like, oh, I need to have that egg roll. I need to have that spring roll. Then I take like two bites of it and I'm like, this shit is not that good. Now I've had some good spring rolls in my life. I've had some good egg rolls, but I also feel like at, mo at the average Chinese food or Vietnamese food place, they are not that good. If you get a bad Vietnamese spring roll, it's literally just like, it's just paper and oil, man. Oh, I guess we get a longer cutscene because it takes them longer. Like, they get a chance to escape. Okay, right click, rev chainsaw. Middle click. I'll just be honest with you, I don't speak that language. <laughs> I don't know what characters are in the middle click. Hello? You're lucky I can't make it through there. Oh, but I can make it. My first round's probably not going to be that good. I, I think we can all understand that, okay? I, I saw feet move. I saw feet move. You punched me in the freaking head, man. <clears throat> make sure you close and lock doors. Otherwise, they can just escape. Good point. <laughs> oh, somebody's making noise in my house. Once I figure out the floor plan, it's over for you, buddy. I have to feel like I have not done an amazing job for my squad so far. And I'd like to apologize for that. I <laughs> this is probably the door where I let them out, right? Is it stairs up? Okay. Phase two, let's go. <laughs> Survivors? Dude, they're escaping like crazy hungry. Okay, you know what? They, they haven't escaped yet. We're going to go back there, but first we're going to level up our grandpa. He needs the damn blood. Caden has escaped. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't know that was like the last phase, man. Wow, uh, so that was probably the worst killer round of all time, huh? Still fed grandpa. Like any day you leave with a full belly, you gotta be feeling pretty good about yourself, right? I should quit this match out of shame and then go into it again. 
Because I can't face the people that I just went up against. Librarian, are you having a good time? Are you here? Are you, do you, have you lost power due to the tropical storm? I know you're a saphead, but to not even see a single message from the librarian in three and a half hours. We didn't even get any material for the... Um, NL talks about Gen Z not being able to watch sex scenes in movies compilation. You know, I got recognized in the grocery store on Sunday. But really, you got recognized. These two people came up to me and they said... They, what I appreciate is they didn't even say, are you Northern Lion? They just knew. And that's, you know, we don't need to go through the song and dance of asking me if I am who I am. They said, my boyfriend loves your videos. He's been watching 10-hour compilations. And then I swear to you, with God as my witness, he said, the librarian, they're doing the Lord's work. You got recognized. Hang on, I've got actually important stuff here. As Leatherface, it's better not to collect blood from buckets. The buckets give based on your collection stat, which Leatherface has low at base. That's incredibly helpful advice. I would not have ever thought to figure that out. Thank you. Your photo of you at Disney looks so different than the man in the box. See, this is, people have been saying that to me, but it's kind of driving me crazy because I'm the same guy. Like, I didn't put any sauce on the Disney photo. I didn't put any sauce on the webcam either. You look dick skin? Well, there's two things there, motherfucker. One of them is I am dick skin. The other one is we were in 37 degrees Celsius heat for a week. I was fucking dehydrated. You can see veins on the front of my calves. Can you believe? Like, just think about how dehydrated you would have to get to have vascularity on the front of your calves. WTF is dick skin? Dick skin is when your body fat gets so low that the, the skin all over your body looks as thin as the skin on your dick. What? Why do, every time we talk about dick skin, we've been talking about it for like two years. People always go, what's that? We explain it and then they go, huh? 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 Why are you getting grossed out like every time? Because it's dumber than hell? You're jealous. Green's not your color. Dick skin is not bait. It's a bodybuilder thing. Looking nice, tight, thick. Be sure to keep posting progress photos so we know how you're doing, King. Keep it up. You can use multiple blood juices on a single grandpa. A lot of you guys don't get it. Wake up grandpa first. You hear that? Is grandpa in here? I'm not, I'm not opening any damn doors, man. I learned my lesson last time. Did you hear that? That's you making that noise? Is that Leatherface's thing? He's like, he's kind of scared as well. Oh, hello! I've collected blood from you. What the heck's going on here, man? I can't even... Grandpa has awakened. I landed a shot, did you see that? Now, we have to close this son of a gun up. And then we... <laughs> no, we don't. Just lock it, please. Wait, there's a survivor through there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right. Open it up. Close it up. Lock it up. But then there's a survivor right behind us now. What am I doing in here? <laughs> Hello, survivor. You think I don't see you there? You're in a, you're in a world of hurt, lady. You're in a world of hurt. <laughs> Got one. Not only did I get one, they were a PlayStation gamer. And my blood vial is full. Grandpa's fed. <laughs> Victim detection act. Oh! Hello, my victim. Taste my blade. Oh, that's not the rev button. Dude said, taste my blade. You're in a world of hurt. I know I should rev more. <laughs> it's my kill! 
That's my kill! That happened because you locked the door? I'm amazing at gaming. Leland has been executed. You guys are all on the on my squad here. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got a grandpa to feed so that we get leveled level two grandpa. It's insane chance being so positive about this. I think you know what it is? I think it's like hide and seek is just one of those like innately enjoyable concepts. Even when the game doesn't ex execute on it super well, I'm not saying that's the case here, but like it's it's something that you can watch and you know what you're seeing. It's not like when you turn on like somebody playing Team Fight Tactics when you've never played Team Fight Tactics or League of Legends and you're like, brother, what on earth are these little dudes doing? As a viewer, you know, you already know the hunt is over. Holy cow, we're insane. Or dice roll simulator. Hey, 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 hey! What's your problem with the dice roll simulator? Or sap? Listen, first off, I'm the MVP. I got more points than the victims combined, so I know what I'm talking about. Don't insult sap, okay? That's like, that's my baby right there. Also, can I tell, maybe this is a little too Korean food pill. There aren't a lot of meals out there where at a restaurant where I go, holy cow, this is still cheap. One is, Korean Chinese food. How the hell can you get a big platter of jajangmyeon, a big bowl of champong, and an enormous... How do they give you so much tang su yuk for so cheap? Like when they bring out the tang su yuk, you'd look at it and you're like, this must be like 50 bucks just for this. But the whole thing is, is $49.99. It's not necessarily cheap, but you could feed like four people with it. That's like 12 bucks a person for a sit-down restaurant? In 2023? Like, that's, that's crazy mode. Speaking about Korean food while literally sawing a woman in half? I'm not sawing a woman in half, bro. Leatherface is sawing a woman in half. I'm just clicking my mouse. But doctor, you are Leatherface. Oh! Where'd they go? You might not see, I can see, okay, 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 hang on. I, situational awareness at an all-time high. Freaking tiny ass FOV, man. They escaped through here. Let me out of here. I don't want to live in the tunnels anymore. I don't want to be Leatherface. Can I be one of the white-collar murderers who gets to start inside of the house? I didn't, I swear to you, I didn't even see him. I would just clicked randomly. He's crying though, so I'm doing something right. Oh, that's Adam Driver. Brother, like, thank you, thank you. He's right here. That's not him, that's Johnny. How do I get out of the damn tubes, man? All the killers are lost. This has got to be a way, right? Okay, listen, Johnny, you got to... Adam Driver, Leland, whatever your name is, you gotta take that ladder up, man. I mean, for me right now, it's just like, it's a combination of like, it's pretty dark, and the FOV is like five, because they don't want Leatherface to be OP. I understand that. And then also, I don't know the map, and it's all like these rat warrens. This looks like me looking for a funny video on your YouTube channel. Wait a minute. You know what it really highlights, though, is that in these games, there's an interplay between killer and victim. When the killer sucks, it's not fun for either party. When the victims suck, it's not fun for either party. Why is Adam Driver getting the free pass? I mean, listen, I don't control Adam Driver, all right? I only control myself. Yes, you're not very good at this game. Me, when I'm 11 years old, trying to come up with the most scathing insult that you could possibly give to an adult. Ally has killed a victim. Did two victims just get killed? Is my team actually way more cracked than I thought they were? Holy cow! One survivor remains. Yeah, yeah, feed him, feed him! But he's trying to kill Grandpa! He 
He's going Kylo mode. Okay. Victim detection is active. Hello, team. Hello, squad. How you doing, guys? Grandpa's power is increased again. Victim has escaped. No, okay. <laughs> Dude, I don't think I'm cut out for for Leatherface, man. It doesn't fit my natural skill set. Look, that was like a 20 minute match and I got nothing. I got, didn't even get any experience. I was gone for a bit. Have you been the bad guy yet? I don't want to talk about it. You are about to be detected by Grandpa. This is just brutal, man. Is merciless. How did they max Grandpa so fast? They must have a perk. Um, it's it's the Gatorade perk. It's like the more you drink, the thirstier you get. It raises Grandpa's uh, blood thirst by one percent per level, uh, as long as the level is indivisible by any other number. <laughs> this is disgusting, man. This is fucking gross, dude. Let her go, man. The hunt is over. All right, new tech, new tech. This has been Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's actually, I've, I've been having a lot of fun. Hopefully on like Wednesday we can come back and, and play this with some gamers of mine who are friends so we can have some banter while we're, we're playing it. Can I give you a little life hack? You buy a block of cheddar cheese, okay? Before you want the cheese, cut all of the cheese in the perfect pieces. Whether you like a wedge or a slice of your desired thickness, Put it in an airtight Tupperware container and put it in the fridge. That way, for the next however long it takes you to eat the cheese, you don't have to get a knife dirty every single time you're cutting it. And you can get the slices out of the fridge in like two seconds. It'll get moldier faster. I'm never gonna... I've never had cheddar cheese go bad on me. It's like the, the, the pack one, pick one when you go to your fridge. You can buy pre-sliced cheese. You can, but you usually have to pay a premium. I'm a mozzarella guy. I'm not trying to be a hater. Enjoy your last two minutes of self-esteem, you piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly just, and again, I'm not trying to be a hater when I say this, but I can't imagine being the kind of person that buys a block of mozzarella cheese at the grocery store to eat the mozzarella like by itself at home when cheddar is like right there. Like the cheddar is literally right next to it. If you got to get some mozzarella for like uh, a string cheese, I understand. If you got to get a mozzarella for an ingredient in something, totally get it. You know, you're not going to make a cheddar cheese pizza. It's not the same. You can put cheddar on it, but like, you know, mozzarella's got to be the base for most of them. But to just eat like a little piece of mozzarella cheese, I would take it. But like if cheddar's right there, I'm buying a, I'm buying a block of cheddar over a block of mozzarella any day of the week. Mozzarella doesn't come in a block, it comes in a ball. European spotted. They are in North America. Mozzarella comes in a block. Buffalo mozzarella comes in a ball. We have a nomenclatural difference, okay? Now, if you get the ball mozzarella, I'm not going to be gaslit into saying that I said real mozzarella is bad. If you're having a caprice salad, I know you're not using shredded mozzarella cheese right off the black diamond block, okay? I didn't think you were buying real mozzarella. I thought you were buying processed mozzarella. It comes in a log in North America. Silence, New Yorker. Minnesotans, rise up. Tell them. Tell them when you go to the grocery store. Can I get someone here from Minneapolis, St. Paul, please? It's a log here. Okay, what about Idaho? There's got to be someone here from Idaho. You're half right. 
I can live with that. I think we're going to be half right on this trade too, because 122 million is like so small. Gold and diamonds. You know what? This has me thinking that like it must be something like Liberia. It's in the region. It's in Liberia is on the western coast of Africa. So this would be like in Central Africa. You know what? what which one is the Congo that might be like embargoed? The Democratic Republic? No, no, no. It's north of that. North of that, Chad. Southwest, southeast of that, the Central African Republic. You know, hey! <laughs> Let's go! I mean, looking at the exports, this makes sense. But I've never like been at the grocery store and been like, oh, holy cow, like these dragon fruits are from... <laughs> you know, the Central African Republic. I always think of the country when I'm in, like, world -ill, but I, ne I never see it in the real world. Very rare, you see, you'll see something on the news about Kenya, South Africa, Egypt, Morocco. Very rare you turn on the news and it's about the Central African Republic. Listen, I have some doers. I know what you're going to say. Did they withstand the groins being blown out of them like every other pair of pants? No, they did not. Are they comfortable? Yes. Do they look nice? Yes. However, are they the world's most comfortable pants? That's insane. They can't compete with gray sweatpants. What are you talking about? This is Poland. Correct. <laughs> That's just what it looks like. I don't know how to explain. There was no process of elimination. That's just what Poland looks like. Why is gray more comfortable? I mean, I, you know what I appreciate about that? You did not say, how is gray more comfortable? Which would have been in, invited an argument. You accepted that gray is more comfortable, which it is. And instead you're asking, what's the magic behind it? And to be honest with you, I don't know the answer. But gray, gray sweatpants... They are the most comfortable. I'm wearing gray shorts right now. They're, I have black shorts too, but the gray shorts are so much more comfortable. I wear black sweat, sweatpants, but he's right. Well, you can wear black sweat, sweatpants like to work or like to a funeral or something like that. All my shorts are gray. All my shorts are gray. Can I tell you, I went to a restaurant for lunch with my daughter on Saturday. They played El Scorcho by Weezer, followed it up. Beverly Hills by Weezer. I said, oh, shit. I was there for the next 70 minutes. It must have been Weezer Summer Jams playlist. It was all Weezer all the time. Now, mercifully, most of them were from the Blue Album through to Maladroit, okay? But I did have to hear a couple of Red Album and Beyond slappers. Did you see Matt Damon Goodwill hunting that guy? In acting, you, there, is, there isn't job security, right? There's an incentive to work hard and be a better actor because you want to have a job. So why isn't it like that for teachers? You, so think, you think job insecurity is what makes me work hard? Well, you have an incentive to work harder, but if there's I, job I want to security... Be an actor. It's not an incentive. That's the thing. So you take this MBA-style thinking, right? It's the problem with ed policy right now. There's this intrinsically paternalistic view of problems that are much more complex than that. It's like saying a teacher is going to get lazy when they have tenure. A teacher wants to teach. I mean, why else would you take a shitty salary and really long hours and, and, and do that job Unless you really love to do it. 10% of teachers are bad. Where'd you get that number? I don't know. 10% of people in any profession maybe should think of something else. Right? Well, okay, but I mean, maybe you're a shitty cameraman. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it any more succinctly than that. <laughs> when the lady asked, like, um, aren't you incentivized to work harder because the harder you work, uh, the more money you make? And he was like, of course you think that because you're in... Uh, First year economics. I work hard because I want to be an actor. But teachers, on the other hand, like they, they want to teach. So, and then the cameraman says, like, yeah, but isn't 10% of anyone bad at their job? And then he said, you could be a shitty cameraman for all I know. Oh, man. But, but, but. How do you, I, I got the collective bargaining agreement. How do you like them apples? That being said, I do think that probably 10% of any occupation probably does suck at their job. The thing is, I don't think there's any way around it. 
Are 10% of teachers bad? Probably. Like I was probably in that 10% when I was a teacher. The thing is though, if they move to another profession, they're probably going to suck at that one too. <laughs> we might as well keep it equally balanced at 10% being shitty at like every profession. I don't want the 10% of shitty teachers to go out there and become shitty doctors, right? I think we did, the, the world has a homeostatic equilibrium here. As a kid, you can tank like one bad teacher. I mean, in high school, you're going to have like four different teachers a day. Well, we had four. But I don't know. Some, how many classes did you have a day in high school? We had one in the fall to winter semester. We had four classes a day. And then we finished those at Christmas. And then in the new year, we had four different classes. Six periods? Five to seven? We had like four... 87 minute long periods or something like that. I mean, like eight is crazy. It's like, what? That's like you have 39 minute long classes or something like that. Our periods were 50 minutes, eight periods plus lunch. I mean, I guess it makes sense. This is a massive dub. I've never heard of anyone with the same high school timing. I thought it was normal, man. I mean, I, I'm actually, I feel bad for you because like four periods a day I mean obviously I normalize to that but like four periods a day seem doable eight periods a day seems insane because the classes are shorter which means they're probably all assigning you more homework right so doesn't your ass have like four hours of homework when you got home I would typically have I don't know like an hour and a half to two hours maybe more if like something was due or there's a big project but like I mean that's insanity I feel if you got eight periods a day, if they all assign 15 minutes of homework, that's two fucking hours. And 15 minutes of homework is nothing. That's like opening the textbook to the right page and answering two questions. If they all assign a half hour, that's four hours of homework. That's insanity. Oh, dude. Okay. So this is so, so much more doable than it looks like it, it is. Point break to Stuart Little. Wait, no, it's not. Because this is the this is the 2011 point break. I don't know who the fuck's in that. But then Stuart Little, there's Jonathan Lipnicki. And then I feel like um, <laughs> the main actor, the dad, is Rupert something. But I always forget his... He's in like Inspector Gadget <laughs> with Matthew Broderick. And then I know the mom too, but I don't remember her name. I don't know anybody that's in the... Point Break 2010, 2011. So we got to start here. Motherfucker's name is Daniel Bonjour. Really? We don't have, we don't have any cameos from either uh, Keanu Reeves or pa Patrick Swayze. Like what a useless fucking remake. Bo Jesse Christopher. Like what's, what's going on here? You got to go Delroy Lindo. And then he's been in a lot of ensemble movies. Delroy Lindo is in Gone in 60 Seconds. Hang on, I gotta think about this. How are we gonna get to Matthew Broderick, brother? <laughs> Hang on, I'm, I'm cooking in my head right now. I'm, I'm actually cooking. Here's what you do. Gone in 60 Seconds, Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie takes you straight to the 90s via, or no, no, it takes you to Girl Interrupted, which takes you to Winona Ryder, which takes you straight to the 90s. And also the modern day, but like, Okay, just scroll me down here a little bit. Obviously, hang on, I'm Matthew Broderick. Bra wait, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Keanu Reeves. Wait, I'm moving in the opposite direction. <laughs> Where's Matthew Broderick? We got to go back further. We got to go back to the 80s, man. Christian Slater from Heathers. But how are you getting to Matthew Broderick? It's a great question. Oh, whoa, 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 my brain. Uh, I don't know if Gina Davis is the mom from... Stuart Little. I feel like it's, I'm thinking the mom from Matilda is the same mom from Stuart Little. But Jeffrey Jones, unfortunately, allows you to get to Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which allows you to get to Matthew Broderick, which allows you to get to Inspector Gadget, which allows you to find Rupert Everett, who is the dad from Stuart Little. That's not the dad from Stuart Little, huh? I can picture that guy in my head. OK, 
Okay, Rupert Everett. Take me way back. Where are we going now? We've got to get to Jonathan Lipnicki via Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Should be so doable. Dude was in Dunstan checks in. Okay, take me to my best friend's wedding. Cameron Diaz, Night and Day, Tom Cruise, Jerry Maguire, Jonathan Lipnicki, Stuart Little. You know what? Pretty, pretty good recovery, but Edgar Ramirez, Domino, Dabney Coleman. Who would have thought? Gina Davis is the mom from Stuart Little. Well, you know what? We know it for next time. I was picturing Matilda's mom. I don't know her name either, though. Hugh Laurie? Hugh Laurie's not the dad in Stuart Little, is he? He is? That's crazy, man. I can't believe I saw that in theaters. I mean, I haven't seen it since then, because, I mean, once you've seen it on the big screen, you don't really need to see it on the small screen, you know? Jeffrey Jones is also in Stuart Little. Wow, I had no idea. Guess the game. This is Tokyo Jungle. You can tell because the sign is clearly in English. Metacritic score. This is The Last of Us. Oh, sorry. I, um, this is The Last of Us Part Dos. He's done it. POV. You are about to be killed by somebody with a bow and arrow, so you have to use a machine gun to uh, blow them away. But when you blow them away, they say, this is going to make my daughter really sad. And then you go, oh, he was a real person just like me. I haven't really played a Naughty Dog game in like 30 years, so I don't know if that's a good representation of what they're like, but that's how they exist in my head. That's how the stereotype exists in my head. By the way, can I just, and I, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. Uh, you may have seen on Twitter, there was a quote tweet, is crypto bros take an L, all right? So the first picture is from like 2021, is a guy with a scar on his abdomen saying, rip kidney, but I had to get a bored ape. And then it's a picture of his bored ape. And then the same person posted a picture or posted a tweet like a week ago that was like, hate to do this, but I had to sell my bored ape. I need money. And then like all the replies are like, wow, thank God you still got two kidneys, bro. At least you still got two kidneys. Don't let it make your, uh, don't let it get you down, bro. At least you still got both of your kidneys. It's funny, but that motherfucker did not sell a kidney to buy a bored ape. He was making a joke at first. He probably had stitches on his abdomen for some, maybe he had his gallbladder taken out or something like that. He used that as an opportunity to make a joke. And then, like, we, we owe it to ourselves when we're dunking on people. We need to use media literacy, okay? There's people that legitimately were like, he's, they think he sold his kidney on Facebook Marketplace to buy a board ape. That's crazy. That's what community notes are for. They need to give me access to community notes. I'll be like, <laughs> my community note will be like, I don't think this happened. That just doesn't make sense. Everything you've ever hated about American teenagers in one auto-destructive movie. Revenge of the Nerds, that's too many words, but let's keep our brain in the right spot. This errant nonsense, obviously aimed at children who aren't yet 16, but who have the fantasies, goes beyond all bounds of intelligence and grace. <laughs> Next clue. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I like this movie. The Corys were actually funny in this one. Oh, it's okay. So Corey Feldman, Corey Haim joint. But all I know from Corey Feldman and Corey Haim is um, The Lost Boys. Were they in like the babysitter adventures in babysitting? Nope. Despite a hardworking cast, this deeply silly comedy only has a blank audiences. Only has, despite the hardworking cast, this deeply silly comedy only has a blank audiences to seek out better films. I don't know. 
License to drive. Fair enough. License to drive audiences away. I get it. Teenager Les Anderson. You would really be like 15 years old in 1988 to have a name like Les. You'll meet like a young boy. You'll be like, what's your name? He'll be like, Walter. I'm like, you are 80 years old already. Thought life couldn't get any worse after he flunked his driver's exam. Corey, it's the, it's the Cold War. Life could obviously get worse. It's gonna... <laughs> it is gonna get better for like a while, but then it's... I don't know, it's in dispute right now. We're figuring it out. Must have been crazy when there was like a traffic jam that was just people. Like before cars existed. Oh, why are you home so late, Walter? Oh, sorry, there was a lot of traffic on Main Street. Never been to a concert? Oh, that's a good point. I guess I've been to Disney World. There was a horse pile up on the, on the road. Um, this is 1930. 1927. This is New York City, baby. Ain't no other city like it. And this, to me, this is within my lifespan. This looks like 1993. That's 1999. New York always was a little bit behind the times compared to Kingston, Ontario. This is um, the moon. So this must be 1969. I do have to say, though, this is how people dress in Indiana Jones. This is some Indiana Jones attire, which makes me think that this is the late 1940s. Oh! My two cents is that this is the eastern front of the Second World War circa 1944. 1940. Oh, maybe that's the Winter War then. Maybe this is in Finland. We did well at the end. We did not do well at the start. Being alive with no internet must have been crazy. It's, <laughs> it's really not. Like, you're alive without the internet all the time. Unless you're, like, literally online all the time. It is, you know what I think back to, though? Is it was kind of insane to meet your friends. Even now, like, I feel more confident, like, making plans. Because if someone, uh, no problem, Kate, no problem. If someone is going to be late, they'll probably text you or they'll call you or something like that. But I would literally like make plans with my friends. I'd be like, on Saturday, let's go see the 3 p.m. showing of Die Another Day. I would tell it to them on Friday. And then on fucking Saturday at 2.30, their ass would be at the movie theater waiting for me. That's crazy. That would not happen, you know, in the, in the old days or in the, the modern days. You would have to send them a calendar request. Uh, they'd put their pin on the map and then they'd be like, I'm 10 minutes away. And the pin would be someplace that's 20 minutes away. And you'd be like, fuck you. And then should we buy tickets? No, no, no. It's all assigned seating these days. Don't worry. We'll just get that. We'll just sit. There. And then they don't fucking show up. Sorry, guys. I decided I'm not really feeling it. There's a tickle in my throat. Back in the day, sometimes you would be like, Hey, I'm not coming to school tomorrow. Can you come to my house Sunday for lunch? You could rely on people back then, man. And if they were late, you know what you did? You just waited for them. Sometimes you wait 10 minutes. They don't show up. You wait 15 minutes. They don't show up. You go into the movie by yourself. This is not a joke. By the, so this is in the era of cell phones, but I didn't have a, a smartphone at this time, at least. In 2010, I arranged a date with a young lady, okay? I said, hey, meet me at this pub for like 1 p.m. for lunchtime, okay? 1 p.m. rolled around. I'm sitting in the, the pub. Waiter comes over and says, hey, do you want something to eat? I said, no, thanks. I'm waiting for somebody. Now I'm on the hook. Now the waiter and I are in this situation together. Now he's rooting for me. He, he's, I sit there for 10 minutes, empty chair. 30 minutes, empty chair. At 45 minutes, and I don't even have a phone, right? I'm sitting there watching whatever they got on TV in the restaurant. After 45 minutes, I just got up and left. I went home and sent her a message on like MSN Messenger and said, what the hell? And she said, I couldn't find you. And I said, I was sitting in a table in the pub. And she said, oh, I was in the like 
I was waiting for you on one of the couches downstairs because it was in like the student commons. And I was like, did I stutter? You were sitting at the brass alone. Excuse me, I wouldn't debase myself going to the brass unless I was watching the 2010 Vancouver Olympics. This was at the Queen's Pub, okay? Did you text her first? No, it was 2010. It said that weird period where we were like moving from like not texting everyone to texting everyone. We, we, we were still living a little bit analog back then. In 2010, we had iPhones. I didn't. I was 20 years old. You were probably 12, which is why you had one. I was buying my own shit. You think I was spending... $500 on a glorified calculator back then? We were texting in 05. I wasn't texting in 05. I was using Facebook Messenger to tell my friends to come to a kegger at our place in 2008. That's about as modern as it got. I'm not sending anybody a text. I'm not, I'm not using the, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Beep, 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 beep. You had to press a button eight times just to get the right letter. Come to... I tell you on Thursday when I see you at Econ 101, we're throwing a rager. It starts 9.45 a.m. on Saturday. It's $10 at the door. Come on over. Wouldn't I know it? You show up at 9.30. You say, hey, can I help cook the hash browns? Dad, we used to be able to rely on people, man. You can take a maxi up, but you can't let a mini down. This is not New York City. This is not how people talk in New York City. New York, okay, this is New York City. New York Rugby Football Club supports gams. Fight for chicks. Minis are for he-men. What's, because like all the verbiage is like 1930, but these people are, well, except for this guy's dressed like it's fucking 1903. He's dressed like Peaky Blinders. I don't know. This is weird. It's a pro miniskirt group. Yeah, I know. But like, why do they have to advocate for miniskirts when it's obviously like, look at this guy. This is 2003. Isn't this Julian Casablanca's? Okay, I'm going to say this is 1971. It is 1970. Protesting for miniskirts? You can see why the younger generation thinks that the world was perfect like 40 years ago, right? Obviously, you know that it wasn't perfect, but there was a protest in downtown, like in, in Manhattan, near the Hudson Yard for miniskirts? My dreams? See, this one's crazy. Because this is like France. This is France, man. This <laughs> all-time great selfie. What's the Ellen DeGeneres selfie? Uh, the body text is like, um, if only Bradley Cooper's arm was longer. That would go crazy with this picture. I think this is Paris, France. Or like Belgium. And I'm going to say this is 1972. It's 1999? What camera were they using, brother? This is like some Kodachrome or something like that. This is not what the world looked like in 1999. This is like a 0.8 megapixel camera. They weren't taking selfies in the 70s. They weren't taking selfies in the 90s either. You had to look through the viewfinder. Valkenhem... Feco, Revenge, Frocken, Sverige, Miss Universum. Okay. <laughs> Welcome home to Sweden. You think I don't know what Sverige is? When Elias Pettersson is on my favorite hockey team? She must have won Miss Universe, okay? Or Miss Universum. I'm going to guess that she came home to Stockholm. And this is circa 1955. And then she's like about to be cast in an Ingmar Bergman film. Holy cow. <laughs> Black Panther Party, Washington, D.C. chapter. This is the events surrounding the trial of the Chicago Six. But it's in, I'm assuming it's in Washington, D.C. Because it says Washington, D.C. chapter. Although I suppose they could have set up a remote office. Washington, D.C., as everybody knows, is located 
right there. And this is 1968. 9,500. Do we have 31 points? 31 points away from getting what I've considered a win arbitrarily? I can do this. We go from the United States to Mexico. We go from Mexico to Gua Well, you know what? Hang on. We're gonna, at some point, we're going to have to connect via Panama. And then from Panama, we're going to go to Colombia. And then there's our connection. I didn't know Colombia bordered Peru. Now that I think about it, yes, I did. But for a second, I didn't. <laughs> and then Mexico borders Nicaragua. No, but it's still on the critical path. Mexico borders. This is Honduras. This is... <laughs> this bad boy right here, that's Costa Rica. I could tell you that much. Ah, and you must be Guatemala. Time? I didn't know that I was doing it, but I did it. Cracked. That was complete luck, by the way. Okay, Chicago Blackhawks, Edmonton Oilers, 500 plus goals in career. All right. I mean, it is like a flashbang out, don't get me wrong. Edmonton Oilers, Buffalo Sabres, Phil Housley. What? <laughs> I give up. <laughs> 500 plus goals in their career played for the New Jersey Devils. Alexander McGilney. Am I stupid? 500 plus goals in their career played for the Buffalo Sabres. Gilbert Perot. Gilbert Perot. Thank you, thank you. Okay. 500 plus goals in their career, 100 plus points in a season. What is all of them? Let's start. How about, I'll tell you what, how about a Yarmir Yager? Good choice. Okay, good one. Alexander McGillney has 473 goals. Motherfucker. <laughs> Are you kidding me? 400, he couldn't score 27 more? New Jersey Devils, Edmonton. These should be so easy. What's wrong with me? Why? Well, you know what? Edmonton Oilers, 100-point season. How about a little guy by the name of Wayne Gretzky? Maybe you've heard of him. You could tell he was good at hockey because he's the only motherfucker in Puck Doku wearing a, a normal clothes. He's not even wearing his jersey for the picture. This shit is from like eight years after he retired, too. Oh, you mean the guy from the gambling ads? Yeah, Wayne Gretzky, he's a, Wayne Gretzky's not just the Wayne Gretzky of hockey. He's also the Wayne Gretzky of convincing you to get addicted to gambling. Chicago Blackhawks, 100 plus point season. Let's go uh, simple mode. How about a little Patty Kane? Now, we can definitely, New Jersey Devils, 500 plus goals in his career. It's got to be Patrick Elias. It's got to be Bobby Holik. This is a disaster, man. Kate's good to go. All right. Oh, sorry, guys. I got to go. My wife's ready to stream. Hope you guys enjoy. I know a lot about hockey. I think the game must be bugged right now. Hope you enjoyed the stream today. Enjoyed your Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I don't know what we're going to play, but I'll see you tomorrow. Later. I'm malicious, mean, and scary. My sneer could curdle dairy. And violence-wise, my hands are not the cleanest. But despite my evil look and my temper and my hook, I've always yearned to be a concert pianist. Can't you see me on the stage performing Mozart, twinkling the ivories till they gleam? Though I do like breaking femurs, you can kill me with the dreamers. Cause way down deep inside, I've got a dream. I've got a dream. He's got a dream. You can.